Hi, uh, it's me again, Paul, and uh, I just wanted to show a uh, project I've been working on for a while now. This is an old 1940s era IMO camera, 35 millimeter spring wound. Here's the crank handle that's removable, and it's got a ratcheting action, so you can ratchet in one direction if that's more convenient. This one is equipped with a magazine well. Uh, attach attaching uh, point and uh, I have 400 and this is the mounting point for a motor you can run it as a spring wound or motor driven but it's a the motor is a beast it weighs a lot and uh, it's a lot more convenient to run it without the motor unless you're running large amounts of film which I'm not today I'm going to get to that in a second this is the start stop switch down here and it can be screwed in to keep it permanently in the start position when you run the motor this is a this was a bomb drop camera most likely or uh you know some other um application like that for the military it did not come with this um viewfinder attachment on the door when i got it i bought the viewfinder attachment and attached it myself and hopefully it's aligned well there's a there's a feature on the door that I use to align it that runs, um, you know, perpendicular to the axis of the camera lens. So actually it's parallel, parallel to the axis of the camera lens. Anyway, let's uh, move along here. This is an Iscorama uh, anamorphic lens, 1.5 squeeze. Now it was mounted to a Nikon uh, taking lens that unscrews. You can either mount this to several different base lenses, which are always set at infinity, so that you can you can actually do the focusing with the adapter itself. But this, I adapted it to a Pentax lens because the IMO can't use a Nikon because it was set too close to the film plane, and I couldn't use a Nikon mount. I tried very hard to make one, and it just wasn't going to work. So this is a Pentax screw adapter that I made for it and machined on my lathe. And uh, anyway, this is all working together now to give me anamorphic 35 millimeter four perf uh, film. Now I want to test it. Well, I've had this camera for a while and the biggest problem I have is I don't have any way to capture the footage after, you know, by myself, I'd have to send it out. And really that's beyond, you know, the, that's too expensive for the kind of hobby level stuff I do. So what I'm going to do is I took a 36 exposure roll of Arista EDU 200 black and white film and spooled it onto a daylight spool. And then I, that'll give me about a little over a second. I did it all in the dark. I loaded the camera in the dark. So I should have the full run other than about 10 inches that I used to to start it on to the um, take up spool. So after I run this through the camera, I'll be able to tell if my lens mount, I'm going to go to infinity on the lens mount and then I'm going to test. I've only got a second, so about a second and a half maybe of, I, I'm run, gonna run it at 16 frames a second since timing isn't critical. I'm going to run it a little slower than I, you know, it's not going to run at 24. It's going to run at 16. So I'll get a little more, maybe closer to two seconds of footage out of this thing. Anyway, this is a single lens version. And uh, I'm going to try this out here shortly. And then I'm going to process the film myself. And uh, I'm going to scan the results frame by frame. Just to, I'm just checking the lens. I have some other film, but I don't want to sacrifice the, you know, color films 100 foot is about a dollar a foot so it's a hundred dollars for a hundred foot roll and uh i don't want to sacrifice that for a film test so i'm using a very short run i'm not the first person to ever do that so um you know it's a, it's a good way to test the camera anyway uh that's the end of this part of the film and i'll get pick it up when i uh get back to uh processing and scanning the film and then i'll Hopefully I can get a few seconds by piecing the frames together and aligning them up in software. I've never tried that, but hey man, that's what it's all about, trying new things, right? Anamorphic lens on a Pentax 50 millimeter on a homemade adapter to a camera that I got working. Uh, it was all froze up and I oiled it and, and now it runs. 
just fine. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll follow up this. Well, here's the results of the film that came out of the IMO camera. And it looks like I got some uh, exposures here. Obviously they're half frame uh, versus there would be uh, the, uh, there would be 90 degrees the other way in a normal camera, but this is a cinema camera. So it uses four, four perfs per frame rather than eight perfs, which would be full frame uh, from like a DSLR. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go down it right here. It looks pretty good. I'm going to take these, take this and scan it uh, frame by frame, hopefully. And uh, I'll put the results up on, in, inside this video. Okay. So here's the final results from the I, I, the scanning was taken too long, so I used my my digital camera on a copy stand with a macro lens and captured each frame while running it through a film strip holder that's for my scanner. Uh, so I took each frame, I slid it down manually with my fingers and took the next frame. So it's, you know, you got no registration to speak of. So uh, I took it into... DaVinci Resolve and I stabilized it and uh, color corrected it and all that and so here here's here's like the sharpest frame and after that they're kind of blurry I think I must have moved the camera as I was pushing the button but anyway it came out pretty good I'm going to play it immediately after the end of what I'm talking about so in three two one and don't blink because you're going to miss it it's only about a second long Okay, here goes.